Hey all, Tony Bartels here with the VIN Foundation. Wanted to stop back in and give you an update on COVID-19 and the impact to your student loans. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we did a very lengthy and detailed webinar on the CARES Act and particularly as it applied to the student loan provisions within the CARES Act. If you haven't had a chance to review that, I would encourage you the free replay is available on the VIN Foundation org blog page. You can review that in its entirety. Uh, you can speed through it or just kind of remind yourself of the different sections and questions that have popped up in there if you need answers to specific questions. But I did want to provide uh, a couple of clarifications on some questions that have come up since then. Most of those are around administrative forbearance and the whole idea of how do I know if my student loans qualify for this suspension or not. So the administrative forbearance is uh, what the loan servicers are using to execute the suspension that the CARES Act talks about. So the CARES Act uses the language of suspension repeatedly uh, in the law itself. The loan servicers um, have this way of executing the law called uh, administrative forbearance. Now this thing existed prior to the CARES Act and, and this whole suspension language. Uh, so the Department of Education essentially said, hey, why don't you use this existing administrative forbearance tool in order to comply with the language that's in the CARES Act to, to essentially achieve the suspension, right? So when the loan servicers use an administrative forbearance, um, it essentially puts your loans on pause. Uh, in this case, the law specifies that no interest will accrue, right? So there's not going to be any interest that accrues during this period and there should not be any capitalization of interest that existed prior to um, the suspension taking place, right? So you should see, or maybe you'll see, depending on your loan servicer, a status in your account that talks a little bit about why your loans are in this forbearance, this specifically this administrative forbearance. So if you don't have something that shows that, hey, this is specifically related to the coronavirus, uh, it's an administrative forbearance that was applied automatically and is, and is essentially a result of the CARES Act, then you may want to find out what type of status your loans were in prior to that suspension taking place. So again, the administrative forbearance, don't not to be too worried about, right? So this is the tool the loan servicers are using to execute the suspension. There's probably not a real good reason to end that administrative forbearance. Uh, no matter what your financial position is, you can always decide later as the suspension period winds down if you want to or need to make any additional payments towards your student loans. So I would keep that administrative forbearance in place. Um, one exception to that might be if you're graduating this year, but we're going to cover that in a whole new webinar. I'll talk about that in just a few minutes. So federally held. How do I know if my student loans are federally held and eligible for this suspension? So federally held loans uh, include all direct loans. So whether they're direct unsubsidized, direct subsidized, or direct grant plus loans, or direct parent plus loans, anything that has direct in the name will quali qualify for this uh, CARES Act suspension period. Um, there are some other federally held or federally owned loans, uh, but they can have various status in terms of whether or not they qualify. So some federal family education loans, some Perkins loans, it really depends on who owns those. If the Department of Education owns them, then they qualify. If they don't, then they will not qualify. Same with health profession student loans and loans for disadvantaged students. These are a type of federal student loan, but they're usually owned by uh, the state or the school that uh, you receive those loans from. Um, so they are not automatically eligible. However, if you were to consolidate them into a direct consolidation loan, then they could qualify for the suspension, right? But whether or not you should do that is kind of beyond the scope of what we're going to cover here. If you have specific questions about that, feel free to email studentdebt at vinfoundation.org. Uh, private loans do not qualify and there's nothing that you can do to make them qualify. So who is the loan owner, right? So if you want to figure out who the loan owner is, uh, first place to start maybe is your loan servicer portal login. But I've given up on that a long time ago. All the loan servicers do different things and show different things. Uh, so the easiest way is to probably grab your student aid data file and then upload it into the VIN Foundation Student Debt Center. 
right? So we have a way for you to do that. There's some a tutorial on how you can uh, obtain and upload your student aid data file. So when you get to the Student Debt Center and you click on the My Student Loans tab, you're going to see something that looks like this. Right? So choose the uh, corresponding box for uploading your data file, whether you're still in school and borrowing, or if you're graduated and in repayment, you can choose that appropriate button to upload your data file. Once you do upload that data file, you'll see something that looks like this. Right? And what you're looking for, and this is a sample of mine, um, what you're looking for under the Loan Servicer tab is who owns the loans that you have. You can see, and this is why I uploaded mine, is because it's a perfect illustration. I have direct loans with Great Lakes that are owned by the Department of Education. You can see that, that it says Department of Ed slash Great Lakes. That means that those loans are owned by the Department of Education. I also have some older FEL program loans that do not say Department of Education in front of them. That means that Navient owns those loans and that balance is not eligible for the CARES Act suspension. Right? So if it says Department of Ed slash loan servicer, you're good. If it doesn't say Department of Ed, then they do not own those loans and they are not eligible for the CARES Act suspension. Once you have this in summary of information, you can send it over to the loan repayment simulator and we have um, integrated the CARES Act suspension period into the loan repayment simulator. So any simulation that you run will show a zero payment and zero interest accumulation for this period between March and September 30th. All right, so what about private loans? What if you do have private loans? Uh, some states have suspended payments on state loans that they control. Uh, so it depends on the state that you live in. Again, you probably want to log into your uh, particular loan servicer or loan holder account and see if uh, they are suspending your payments. And then some states have actually reached an agreement with some of the private lenders, uh, private student loan lenders. Uh, so visit this Forbes article, uh, search, you know, again, search your state to see if they have any kind of arrangements. But again, you're going to have to log in to your specific private student loan account, uh, review those details carefully and see if you're eligible for some kind of, of deferment. Uh, most of them are not nearly as uh, comprehensive as the uh, CARES Act suspension, uh, but they are trying to approximate what was offered in that CARES Act. But make sure you understand that carefully and what the side effects of, of having a, a deferment or, or forbearance or suspension on your private student loans might mean long term. So just a, again, just a quick video here. Wanted to just make sure that you're aware of those two particular things. Also wanted you to know that the interest and in payment suspension is being covered in the Student Debt Center, uh, particularly in the Student Loan Repayment Simulator, as I showed you. And if you're still in school and borrowing, uh, we are factoring in the CARES Act suspension if you want to estimate your remaining costs using the in-school loan estimator. For those of you that are graduating this um, this coming season, right? So in the next couple couple of weeks here, we're going to see a lot of uh, veterinarians graduate in the 2020 graduating class. We're going to be doing a free student loan playbook specifically for 2020 graduates, right? So this is a little bit different than the ones we've done in the past because of everything that's going on, right? So we're going to take some time and make sure that we walk through all of the uh, CARES Act provisions and how they impact your student loans and, and then how you can use uh, some of that suspension period uh, to get a jump start on your student loan repayment plan. So uh, there's a link to registering for that free webinar that's going to be held on Wednesday, May 6th next week. Uh, so register for that and then when you receive the registration, make sure you look for the secret homework link in there, right? So it's, I say secret because the easiest way that we had to send you the link to that student debt and income signalment form was through the confirmation email. So after you sign up or register for the webinar, uh, you'll get an email and there's a link to the student debt and income signalment form. If you fill that out before the webinar, going through all the tools that we're going to show during that playbook is are going to make a lot more sense and you'll have better questions and then you'll have a better idea of what your repayment plan should be. So we'll look forward to seeing you there on Wednesday if you're graduating this 2020. Uh, if you have any additional questions on your student loans during this confusing, crazy COVID-19 period, uh, please feel free to drop us a line at studentdebt at binfoundation.org. Uh, stay safe.
be well, and we'll, um, we'll catch you on some further updates. Thank you.